Moon Knight Episode 4 is now available on Disney+. Plus, and if you guys have been following this show with me week after week, the intrigue level is certainly climbing, and the confusion level has just surpassed the intrigue level. People who got the early reviews for Moon Knight before we all got, like, Episode 1, got the first four episodes. And I say the first four like, like it's like a 20-episode season or something. No. Why did everybody get four out of the six episodes? That it just doesn't compute. <laughs> We're about to dive deep into spoilers for the latest episode of Moon Knight, so if you have not seen the new episode yet and are not caught up with the show, you might want to go and do that because, as I've been saying, Oscar Isaac is delivering a fantastic performance week after week, and it's only getting better, even amongst the confusion that this episode has brought forth to us. But if you want to hear all the nitty gritty spoilers, stay tuned. <laughs> What's up everybody, welcome back to The Hess Project, I'm John Ordalaza, and today we're talking spoilers for the latest episode of Moon Knight, episode 4, The Tomb. Now this episode is different than the other ones, I honestly think it's the most standout episode of the four we've gotten so far. It feels... Uh, really different in a good way and a not so good way. So we'll, we'll talk more about that. So this episode gave me a lot of different vibes that the show hasn't really given me yet. I felt a lot of Uncharted in here. I know some people have been throwing around National Treasure. I've never seen National Treasure, sorry. <laughs> but the, it gave me a real vibe of this adventure into a deep, dark tomb. It, it felt like Indiana Jones to an extent with some Uncharted for sure. And the thing that's not so good about this episode is, okay, so you all know I love me some Moon Knight. That, that costume is dope. I love to see the costume in action. I loved how the last episode gave us the most Moon Knight action out of the three that we had last week. This episode takes a massive backseat to the action and to Moon Knight. Moon Knight's not even in this episode. Um, t technically he is, but we'll get to that later. But essentially, no. No Oscar Isaac suiting up in Moon Knight. No Moon Knight throwing down with baddies in this episode. We got that in the last episode, and now we're taking a backseat. We're doing this tomb raiding or tomb busting. While I was disappointed that we got less Moon Knight and less action in this episode, we didn't really build off of the momentum of the last episode in my opinion, it does give me quite a bit of excitement and enjoyment in this one. I love tomb raiding. I, I love when people go into tombs. I love exploring the unknown, going deeper and deeper into a tomb. You have no idea what's waiting for you on the other side. Neither did Layla and uh, Stephen Grant. Yeah, dude, there was like this this creature of some sort. He looked like a creature, but it's obviously a man. He looked like he had rotting flesh, like he had charred skin. And he looked like he had been down there for days, doesn't know where the exit door is. And he was just eating some guy he found. With this creature, I guess it's kind of like a creature. With the introduction of him in this episode, it's kind of like a horror element added into the show that we never really got in the first three episodes, but now we do. And it works. I, I really liked it. I liked seeing Layla running for her life, essentially, because she didn't want to be eaten by this thing. And she's going across this very steep cliff top whatever the hell it's called like cliff ledge where she's got you know we've done this all the time in the tomb raider games and the uncharted games they're right on cliff side she's like tr just shimmying you know doing her thing trying trying to survive meanwhile on the other side of the rock that she's leaning on where she only has got like a foot of space to move her feet is there's these crevices in between the rocks and the creature, the dude, the charred man, is just shoving his hand through the cracks and trying to grab her. It was suspenseful, it was gritty, it was kind of nail-biting at times, and I enjoyed it. I loved seeing Layla in peril, almost, up against this thing. We get more of Stephen Grant and Layla, like before, he had no idea who she was. She still thinks, and even in this episode, she still thinks that he's kind of messing with her to an extent. 
And I, I like it though. I like that we're slowly getting this relationship built between the two. Steven is obviously a more kind-hearted person, so it's a much different dynamic than what we can expect with uh, Mark and Layla, which they don't really show us a lot of. We got some of that in the last episode, but um, they're married, of course, so they obviously love each other, but you can tell that they butt heads a lot. I will say I am kind of struggling to grasp like the importance of Ethan Hawke's character. I, I still don't remember his name. It just keeps flying over my head, but I, I really enjoy his acting. I think he's really good in this suspenseful man of mystery type role. I feel like every time he's on screen, he's there to serve as some sort of exposition. And especially in this episode, we get him explaining the backstory a little bit of Layla's father and how he died and who potentially is responsible for that. He kind of leads her to believe that Mark Spector is the one responsible for the death of her father. I think it was before this scene where Layla confronted him, Stephen had his arm elbow deep into the throat of the mummified body of Alexander the Great. Yeah, that, that was a sentence that I just said. That's the type of stuff that I find disturbingly thrilling in these kind of concepts of like tomb raiding, going into a tomb of old ancient stuff. Like, it's... Wow. We gotta remember in the last episode, the Egyptian gods, they imprisoned Khonshu, so now Stephen Grant and Mark Spector do not have the powers of Moon Knight or summon the powers of Khonshu or whatever the terminology is. They're just an ill person with disassociative identity disorder. Ethan Hawke remembered that and then shot him point blank twice. One for Steven, one for Mark, and he fell into a pool right behind the tomb where he throated uh, Alexander the Great, and then it goes to black, then it focuses on this light in the middle of the screen, and then it fills the screen with this four by three aspect ratio, and shows this young kid, this older gentleman who looks like the crocodile hunter, <laughs> and the kid calls him Stephen Grant, and then it zooms out of the screen, it's on a TV screen, and we're in a giant white room. We're in an asylum for the clinically insane, and then it cuts to Mark. He doesn't know his whereabouts, and he's holding a Moon Knight action figure. See, we, we did get some Moon Knight in here. What is going on? I need answers. Is any of this real? Layla walks by. She's not Layla, apparently. I don't know. Maybe her name is still Layla, but she's a, a, a doctor or a nurse that works here. Ethan Hawke's apparently the the doctor in charge at this insane asylum, and he's trying to explain to Steven, or to Mark, I should say, that Mark is sick. And Mark's flipping out, dude. He eventually runs out of the room, finds another room, locks the door behind him, and there's a tomb sitting in the room. Out comes another another him, like a clone of him. This is not Fallen Kingdom, no. <laughs> but no, it, another Oscar Isaac comes out of this tomb and it's Stephen Grant. It's, it's Stephen Grant. We get a body of Oscar Isaac <laughs> as Mark Spector and another Oscar Isaac as Stephen Grant. They hug, they explain to each other what's happening. They're flipping out with each other and now they're like, we gotta get out of here. We gotta find a way out. As they make their way out of the room, they walk past another room that's got this tomb sitting upright and it's shaking. They don't open it though. They don't even go in the room. They just look at it and then keep walking. This is my theory based off of what we just saw 30 seconds prior. Stephen Grant, another uh, Oscar Isaac body coming out of a tomb. Uh, th that third one has got to be the third personality, the third person that's been in control because we've seen someone uh, take control as Mark Spector blacked out in the last episode, and it wasn't Stephen Grant. So this is further proof that that's probably this Jake Lockley guy, that they'll probably be changing um, his backstory and whatnot from the comics. He might not be the exact same person, but it's gotta be that, you know? It's gotta be some iteration of this Jake Lockley guy, and I'm so intrigued by this. Anyways, they get to the end of the hallway, the big doors open and this, what? This, uh, <laughs> this hungry, hungry hippo walks through. It looks like it's got some sort of uh, deity 
uh, clothing on and, and garb and, and jewels. And it just looks at them and says, hi. <laughs> like in this high pitched voice, they both start screaming, Mark and Steven. And then the show just ends, cuts to black, credits. What's going on, dude? I don't know. But thank you for joining me on this review of Moon Knight episode four. Let me know down below. What are your thoughts on this episode? And what do you think is going to happen in those last two episodes? We only have two episodes left of this series. And I hope something's real. <laughs> I, I hope something gets explained. I would like if we got a little more than this and maybe a, maybe quite a bit of the show is left to, open to interpretation, but we got to have some answers resolved. And, you know, because a lot of the other Marvel shows will tend to wrap them up too quickly. It doesn't feel satisfying enough. I felt that way for sure in some of the other shows, Falcon and Winter Soldier and Hawkeye. So I hope Moon Knight learns its lesson and does it differently. You know, I think Loki was a good example of leaving things open to interpretation while also leaving things open for season two, because that's going to happen in like ugh, a year. God dang, that's so far away. Anyways, guys, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Be on the lookout for the next two episodes of Moon Knight. I will be here reviewing them on the Wednesdays they drop. You might want to stick around, guys, because there is more to come.